Right, 29 February 2020, and I'm back with Mr. Kalipani Pugeni, spokesman for Dr. Togzani Kupe of the MDCT. How are you, sir? I'm okay. How are you? Very well. Yeah. How are you feeling today after the revelations <laughs> by <laughs> Professor Jonathan Moy? Uh, maybe you want to say after the unfounded allegations. But to us, it seems like there's evidence. There was a ticket there. Okay. An air ticket. What yeah. happened? What, what was that ticket for? Where, where was Witness Dube going? Okay, what I know, this this I know for sure, is that uh, Jonathan and Witness, I think Witness calls him Malume or vice versa, but there is that uh, relationship. So what is clear is that uh, Jonathan was looking for someone very close to Dr. Kupe so that at the time he could do Chamisa speeding. In other words, request Dr. Kupe to give him and uh, allow Chamisa to unconstitutionally and violently take over as the president of the MTCT. That whole trip was all was about that. Nothing more, nothing less. Jonathan has never spoken to Dr. Kupe, at least on, on, on these matters, not at all. The last time he spoke to Dr. Kupe was after Muko, he went to Bulawayo and they wanted to assault Dr. Kupe. So, Witness Dube yeah. traveled on that ticket yes. to Kenya. Yeah. Why was he going to Kenya? Was he going on behalf of Dr. Kupe? No, 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 no. It was... Uh, let me give you an example. I am sure that there are many people who have... In fact, I know this. There are many people who have approached you to speak to me on behalf of certain people. There are many people who have, who have done that to you. But it does not follow that simply because they have approached you. If it happens that they buy me a ticket so I meet those people through you, then therefore Dr. Kupe has sent me to go and ask for resources. That's exactly what happened today. Witness was a close eight of Dr. Kupe and the, the professor then thought that if I want to get to Dr. Kupe, what do I do? I then call her close eight and try and persuade her using the close eight and it didn't work because when witness came back from that trip told Dr. Kupe that I went to see these guys and this is what they are requesting Dr. Kupe said no, can never do such. Okay, what were they going to give Dr. Kupe in return if she just stopped claiming the MDC presidents? I don't know because, look, if if there was a negotiation or if witness was sent by Dr. Kupe, you could then ask that type of a question. But like I'm saying to you, if because of the relations you get me to speak to people that want certain things from Dr. Kupe and Dr. Kupe has not sent me. In other words, witness was not an envoy of Dr. Kupe. That's what I'm saying. So you can't even get to negotiations of saying, okay, if she does this, what does she get and all, all those things. Because... It was never, there was never anything on the table. Dr. Kupe would not even entertain it. Just as when witness came back, Dr. Kupe said, no, I'm not interested in all of this. Okay, so Jonathan Moore is wrong in saying that you approached him. He's lying. Okay, he's lying? He's not wrong, he's lying. Okay. And, and he's doing that deliberate. Because remember that trip happened, I think, 28th of March, yes. right? Our extraordinary congress happened on the 21st of April. So when you've got a whole professor saying MTCT sent a delegation, there was just one MTC at the time. So okay. so so he brings in Advocate Kutu into it. Advocate Kutu was the spokesperson at the time. Of the whole MTC. Of the whole MTC. I was a national executive member in charge of uh, uh, ICT and science development at the national level. That's the portfolio I had. I was also in the shadow cabinet. That, that, that's as far as, as, as it goes. And witness at the time was the aide to Dr. Kupe. He was not representing any party whatsoever. All right, let's go to the second allegation. Yeah. Is Dr. Kupe being helped by Tagwire to buy the court judgment? Well, I can tell you this categorically. Dr. Kupe has never met Tagwire. Uh, directly or through envoys or anything of such. Never. This is just a useless accusation uh, inserted there by Jonathan and we know why he's doing that. Because he realizes that the world is catching up to the reality that they have captured MTC Alliance, they have captured uh, its leader and the long arm of the law is catching up with that whole project. So he's just mudding the waters as it were. But w w why would you, he just take up the figure of 2.4 million, why would you mention Dr. Kupe's name? He's said a lot of detailed information. No, but what no... if he, reduce, he produces other information? There is no information to produce. I, ch anyway, I challenge him to do that. 
I challenge you to do that. Proof. Yeah, because look, I mean, you guys, you, you'll have to do your, 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 your research as journalists. Let me give you an example. The two high courts, the one in Bulawayo and the one in Harare, they've made a determination on this matter, by the way. So the, to then want to blackmail, as it were, the Supreme Court to say if the judgment comes in favor of Dr. Cooper, it's because the Supreme Court was compromised. Let me tell you what. Intelligent people know what Jonathan is doing. The diplomatic community know what Jonathan is doing. The question is, how can you not see it? And every Jack and Jill walking around there in Zimbabwe, they know that uh, Chamisa violently and unconstitutionally usurped power from Dr. Kupe. Everyone knows that. So for someone to say, thumb suck a figure and say there's 2.4 million, neither, no, everyone knows that's a lie. Everyone knows that Jonathan is making this thing up. It's a big accusation. It's a big useless accusation. It's not backed by anything. There's no basis for it. There's no basis yeah. for it. It's because Jonathan Moy has got such a big following. Almost a million people. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that because he's listened to by a million people, uh, whatever he says, however illogical, however erroneous, however absurd it is, then it must be accepted. Okay, the last question. Yes. Where is Jonathan Moyo getting this money that he's giving people? I am now almost convinced, looking at his operations, that there is a faction of ZAN, uh, even beyond the G40, you know in the contemporary setup there's a faction of zanu that is busy panting or is, is is pushing an agenda for okay yeah so basically what we're saying is that if nelson jamisa and the mdc took money from jonathan Moore, yeah they've basically been captured by a faction of zanu PF. of course i mean <laughs> isn't it obvious to you is this not obvious to you Okay. Is this not... I am saying to you, when Jonathan sent a message to Dr. Kupe that she must ignore the constitutional violations, she must ignore democratic processes, Dr. Kupe said, no, I'm not going to have that. The meeting happened on the 28th, right? Yes. When Dr. Kupe was the acting president of the United MTC. The splitting of the party happened on the 21st of April. This is after the meeting. This is about what? Odd three weeks after the meeting, right? Yes. It's about three to the, almost the fourth week after the meeting. Uh, he then wants to say it was an MTCT delegation or MTCT led by Dr. Coop. How does one person, one person become a delegation? This is a professor, remember? Yeah. Uh, one person is a delegate as far as I know. But he makes it clear that he met the MTCT of Dr. Coop, a delegation. Let's conclude. Dr. Kupe has never approached Jonathan Moyo for resources. She has never. She the, will never. The trip to Kenya was at his invitation. It was at his invitation, and he invited a person close to Dr. Kupe. Okay. But not with Dr. Kupe's blessing. He yes. invited that person. And Dr. Kupe has no true restriction on people to say, you go there, you don't go there. On private matters, I meet you here at my own will, by the yeah, way. Yes. Dr. Kupe has no knowledge of our meetings. Yes. I meet you in other private meetings. Sometimes we do our own business, as you know. And Dr. Kupe, has, there's no reason to want to almost micromanage me. Tell me this moment, why are you meeting and why are you meeting this person? Okay. And then Tagwire is not buying the judgment for Dr. Kupe. If he's buying the judgment, it's for someone else. No, but you see, that accusation, um, uh, and, and I can tell you, honestly speaking, no one must be allowed to make such accusation against um, the Supreme Court. No one must be allowed to make such an accusation. So what should happen proof, to him? With, with no basis. What should happen to him? He must be called to book. He must substantiate these allegations of his, or he's in contempt of court. The country is now reduced to a serious rumor mill, and um, if you are now going to attack the institutions of democracy, it's very unfair, because what are we left with? So we're going to run this country on the whim and uh, the hang of uh, Jonathan Moy. How are we going to run this country? They've impeached Zek, they've impeached the Constitutional Court, they're now impeaching the Supreme Court, so where are they going now? Right. No, no, this is too dangerous, man. I understand. Right, let's wrap it up here. If you're watching this on WhatsApp, please send to as many people as possible. If you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, 
please like comment and share thank you very much mr bogen thank you <laughs>